Hello guys, today I want to show you one very popular line in Sicilian defense, which is called Sozin. Sozin attack, uh, it was the favorite line of uh, Bobby Fischer in the past, so that's why even many people call this line Sozin Fischer. After e4, c5, White uh, wants to play in the main lines and he wants to get his bishop to c4, so basically the line begins after white goes uh, bishop c4 and again note that uh, this line is not good against everything because in sicilian you know that black can play different lines so this line is not good when black plays first e6 and he delays the move d6 for instance if he goes now for e6 and you want to play at some moment bishop c4 because now black can play knight c6 or uh, some other move. For instance here, you have to be careful because now, yes, d6 is transposing the line into the sozin, but bishop b4 and white will have problems uh, to defend the e pawn because of this pin. So this works only against d6. And then, when you arrive to this position, usually from black's point of view, now he has to play at some moment e6 or he can switch to some kind of dragon Sicilians with g6 but if he goes e5 this is uh, not such a good move because uh, then you can move the knight uh, let's say to f5 or maybe also to f3 and then the bishop is very strong on this diagonal so black has to play e6 if he plays immediately b5 to attack the bishop you should not be afraid that you might lose the pawn and don't go back to d3 or e2 because then you just lost one move you have to go to b3 and now if he is so eager to take this pawn you just go knight d5 so take a look at the development already white has uh, three pieces who are developed and now if black captures this pawn here knight uh, queen f3 is a very strong move which has the idea to attack against f7 with the bishop and the queen, but also you attack the rook on a8. So now he has to move the knight, because if f5, probably you can just take on f5. If he goes to f6, of course, you just take and then uh, collect the rook. So he has to play to c5, because now there is some kind of small trick that if you play here, First of all, um, yes, you can capture on f7, then you can take the rook, but there are some uh, unclear lines. For instance, now maybe black could uh, have some uh, compensation with bishop to b7, and then the queen on a7 is out of the game a little bit, so he could try to maybe, I don't know, to take on g2 or to play e5. So the best after knight c5 is probably apart from uh, knight before, actually knight before, I think it's a very good move the idea is that now you still attack on f7 and you still attack the rook so he has to take the bishop but when you capture on b3 now the rook is under attack and then also knight c6 is coming so um, yeah I think black will lose here material so white has a very big advantage and usually Black goes e6 directly. Then already he could prepare b5. So uh, normally now people, most of the people go immediately back to b3 to avoid uh, this b5 and b4 which could be coming and then black can uh, take the pawn. And of course from here black has uh, many many possibilities. Uh, bishop e7, knight c6, knight d7, b5. But what is the plan for white? Overall, white wants to make a castle, then to push f4, and then there are two main deviations. Uh, one idea is with f4, f5, very quickly to put pressure on the pawn on e6, with the knight, with the bishop, and with the pawn from f5, to force black to push e5, and then to use this outpost. Or the other thing is to push f4, e5 very quickly, to open the f5 for the rook and then uh, the queen goes when the knight moves from f6 the queen can move to this diagonal 
The bishop also can go to f4, but all this is depending, of course, what black will do. Now black can, let's say, he is simply developing uh, the king side. Castle, castle, now f4. I think now probably black has to try to exchange the knight to reduce the amount of pressure against e6. So he can play knight c6. And then after bishop e3, you have to be careful, of course, uh, when you push the pawn. If you don't uh, move the bishop to e3, often black can play d5 followed by bishop c5 or queen b6 to pin the knight. So it is good if the bishop is here to protect this diagonal. And then if he takes, you can take with the bishop. And after this, you can choose between... Now, there are three possibilities. f5, e5 or simply a3 to stop before and then you can prepare maybe queen to rook d1 and so on. But e5 is, I think, the most uh, critical line in this system. And then uh, you have to take with the pawn because if you take with the bishop, the end game is, uh, I think, equal. So black don't have uh, some big problems. Now black has to find uh, this move knight d7 because if he goes to d5, this actually is uh, giving white a very nice choice. You can choose between knight takes d5, where black has a weak pawn, or even knight e4, and then the queen goes to g4, for instance, if he goes something like this. You can play queen g4, and now you want to play the rook here, and knight f6 is a very common plan. The best is to go to d7 to put some pressure on e5, and sometimes to prepare bishop c5. The main line goes knight e4, and after bishop b7, knight d6, uh, and there are some very big complications. But in general, um, if black finds the best move, he will equalize, but uh, it is very tricky to know all the best moves for black. Uh, apart from this move, of course, he can play still b5. So what you have to know here now, if he goes now, usually he goes bishop e7, bishop b7, b4 is more rare move. Um, bishop b7, in this case, if you play f4, after b4 there are some complications which could be maybe a uh, little bit uh, better for black. So now normally people play rook e1. So in this case the idea is slightly different now. Or if he uh, attacks the knight. The idea of rook e1 is now to jump knight d5, attacking the pawn on b4. So black has to take. And then you take with the pawn and suddenly there is attack on the e-file. Obviously this is uh, losing for black because after knight f5 white has very big advantage. Uh, so what can he do? Maybe instead of b4 he can try... Um, yes, probably better is knight d7. Although now uh, some people here prefer to play a4 with the same idea to force b4 knight e5. Or you can play bishop g5. And uh, here, apart from knight d5 idea, also there is idea with bishop to d5. This actually is one of the main theoretical lines. And if he takes, takes, okay. In this case, uh, there is no checkmate. But, uh, now surprisingly, after b4, the knight can only go to a4. But when white takes takes, he has now this very strong move, c4. Although there are some other good moves, by the way, b5, but okay, c4 is the most obvious. And here uh, white is uh, almost winning, yeah. Now he is a piece down, but black uh, doesn't have any coordination and c5 is coming. So the attack is uh, very, very strong. If black goes bishop to e7, now this is some kind of mixture between the line which we have saw bishop e7 and b5. In this case, already you can play queen f3. Queen f3 has obviously the idea e5 and then to attack the rook. Uh, so if he plays queen c7, there is a small trick now that e5 seems that uh, this is winning for white, but after bishop b7, he is attacking the queen with the tempo and uh, this actually is uh, good for black. So now you have to play um, queen g3 to attack the pawn. 
Now g6 is a mistake because now after bishop h6, black cannot castle. So he has to castle now, and then he has to find now uh, knight e8. Knight h5 is not so good because after queen g4, he cannot move the knight uh, because of the checkmate. If he plays g6, you take the rook. So better is to go to e8, although it's slightly passive, of course. And you see here white has a very good development. Already you have castle, all your pieces are developed, uh, the black pieces are very passive, and uh, after rook d1, now you have to defend the knight, and then the plan is simply to play f4, f5, and uh, also another trick is that here in this position, knight c6, um, white again can try actually knight d5, because if black takes, now after knight takes, if black takes this knight, after bishop d5, white is winning the exchange. So there are a lot of tricks which black has to avoid. Uh, basically, those are some of the main, main ideas. Uh, knight d5 or bishop d5, those tricks, or f4, f5, and then um, bishop to Okay, bishop d7 here is the best move to defend the knight, so black actually has to find that now after knight c6 he can take with the bishop and not with the queen. And then white goes f4 usually, this is a very standard continuation now, f5, the idea is of course to put pressure on the pawn, but also if now black goes e5, after f6 white is winning, why? Because g7 is hanging. So he has to take with the bishop, but after rook takes, he is losing material. So again, black has to find some very clever moves like king h8. But even now, there is actually f6. And here there are big complications. Usually, okay, black takes on h6 because again, if bishop takes, rook takes. And now white takes, and then, uh, yeah, this is a very complicated position. Queen f2, and then sometimes uh, queen d4 check or queen to b6. And white has a very good um, initiative in this case. Or here, instead of queen f3, queen g3, also you can play f4. This line is uh, more forced, and now e5 or f5. e5, the line goes like this now. Black has to find knight d7. It's very tempting to go bishop c5, but this is actually a mistake. What is the uh, idea now for white? The idea is that now when he moves the knight, knight e4 comes with a tempo. That's why bishop c5 is not so good. Better is to go immediately to d7, because now, of course, if bishop e3, black can play something else. And now queen h5 is one of the main moves, although, of course, there is bishop e3, there is uh, bishop f4. And here black has many possibilities, but the most... Uh, Maybe critical is when he plays this knight to six. It seems like a blunder, but actually after this move he can play queen b6 and then uh, he takes the knight, although of course again white has a very strong attack. But if black finds the best moves, he could defend. So this is one of the possible ideas, e5, and now let me show you quickly the lines with uh, f5. So here you can play, of course, as well, f5. And now the idea is that now, if he plays d5, knight e2, and then after b4, you have this knight d5. So this is a very good outpost for the knight. But black should play here, I think, first b4, because he has to attack this knight. And when the knight moves, then already e5 is, I think, the best for black, because now the knight uh, cannot go to d5, and in this case, uh, I think uh, black has a good game, yes, it's around equal. Now, there are some tricks, again, that if he takes, I think this is actually not the best move, because here, after queen g4, again, this is a very interesting idea for white, that you attack the bishop, and the idea is bishop h6, let's say if he goes here, now you go to h6. So he has to defend, but actually it's not defending because you can just take, take, and now after f6 he has to sacrifice the queen. So this is another 
trick in this uh, Sozin Fisher attack. So, in general, this is uh, a very interesting uh, line in which uh, White has good attacking chances.